everybody, it's Doug. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about adding implementation plugins into your analytics implementation and launch. Now, in case you're not familiar with how we use these terms, an implementation plugin is just really a little chunk of JavaScript meant to give you some additional functionality and some additional information in your analytics implementation. Okay, and so we'll put these JavaScript snippets into launch in the right place so that they can gather the information and put it into your reports. So you can see here it's, you know, typically JavaScript and their programs or functions that perform, you know, lots of different stuff. So if you go to the help documentation, and I just got there by going in the interface and then going to the help bubble over here and going to help home, and then you can just search for implementation plugins and it'll bring you to this place and then you can learn all about them, including getting a list of some of them that are available to you here in the documentation. Now, if you've heard about one that doesn't seem to be in here, then get a hold of Adobe Consulting or Adobe Client Care and talk to them about getting some functionality through a plugin that maybe you've heard about on the forum or something wherever you've heard about it. In any case, I want to show you where you're going to put that code. Okay, so now the first thing you're also going to do is you're going to go through the steps that we did at the beginning of this whole implementation. If I jump back over to the SDR, and you're going to want to document this. And so let's say, for example, and I'll jump back here. Let's say that I want to use this get new repeat. In other words, I want to be able to put into an EVAR, whether it's a new visitor or whether it's a repeat visitor based on, you know, is it their first visit or is it, you know, visit number two and above. And so this little plugin can help us with that. But again, we want to make sure that it is documented correctly. So we're going to go back over. We're going to go into our business requirements. Don't skip these steps. And we're going to say we're going to track new versus repeat visitors. And so we're going to do this new repeat will be the name of the report. And what EVAR are we going to use? Well, it looks like we haven't done EVAR 4, so we're going to use that one. And we don't really need an event. We're just going to populate this EVAR with new or repeat. So that's great. Once we've got it in there, we can go to our variable map and we can put that right on EVAR4 right here. We can go new, repeat. We're going to put it into our implementation via a plugin. Okay. And you can fill this out later and, and make sure that it is in this EVAR here and that you've got everything documented correctly. Okay. Now, the next step that we did when we did this as well is we went into the admin console. So I go back into analytics. We go into report suite manager and we need to document this. So I went to admin report suites. Then we choose our dev report suite. And the EVARs, if you remember, are under edit settings, conversion, conversion variables. And then we still have custom four available to us there. So we're going to grab that. We're going to call it new repeat visitor. And it's enabled. It's a text string. And we want the allocation to be most recent, the most recent value. And we're good to expire after the visit. That's all correct. And that's fine. So we'll hit save. Okay, great. So that is successful. And just don't forget to do those steps, right? Don't forget to document it and to go ahead and set that up in the admin console here so that we can get everything working and titled correctly. Now we can go ahead and go do it. So we can go into launch and the plugins you're going to want to put into the configuration of Adobe Analytics extension. So I'm going to configure and I'm going to collapse that. And we can see that we have a configure tracker using custom code. This is the place where you're going to put your general plugins. Now, before we go in, and certainly I can open this editor, but I might just mention also that always check to see if there is an extension that is going to do what you want it to do. 
Because at the end of the day, if there's an extension that will make it easy for you to implement something, then do that instead of putting a bunch of code in that will do it. I mean, we're using Launch so that we can use these great tools instead of having to just put code everywhere. So check the extensions. And if there isn't one that does what you need, then great. You can go here and we'll open that editor and we can put the code in here. Now I'm going to jump back to my implementation plugins documentation. And we are going to get from that a thing called do plugins. So the next page down there is to call plugins with the do plugins function. So assuming you have the latest version there and you know, you'd have to go back a long ways to use H code. So guaranteed you probably have this. So I'm just going to grab this plugins function. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in launch in that window right there. You can see here where it says add calls to plugins here. So we can put different things right there. Now this do plugins function is actually called from the code library and it happens last. So you could reset variables here. You could do anything here. Every time a call goes into analytics, it runs this last right before it goes in. So we can set things in here and they will set variables and do different things and then get sent right into analytics. So that's very helpful. Okay. So we go back to our documentation and once again, as I mentioned, I want to use get and repeat. So I'm going to click on that and I need the code for it. So you can scroll down a little bit and you can see here is the code that is going to actually do all the gathering of the information. I'm going to copy that and bring it back and put it outside of do plugins because we just need to let it load. So this is going to load. And then again, this plugins function runs last. So this will load and be ready to be called by anything in here. So we go back to our documentation and we can see that this is the way that you can call it right here. So it talks about the different arguments. They're both optional, but you can read the first one is the number of days that the cookie should last. Default value is 30. So you can have 30 or you can leave a blank. And then the second argument is just the name of the cookie. So it doesn't really matter. You can put a value in there or you can leave that blank as well. Now I will copy that, but you can see that that's going to set prop one. That's not what we wanted. We wanted EVAR4. Nevertheless, we're going to come back to launch and we're going to pop it in there. And then we're simply going to change this to S.EVAR4 with a capital V on EVAR. And that's how you set those in code. This will call getting a repeat right down here and it'll run its cool stuff and it'll put either new or repeat into EVAR4 right there. And that's how you set up plugins. And so you make the calls to them inside do plugins and you just put the code for it down below here outside of that function. As you can see, it ends right there on eight. And then we can save that, save to library and build. And that's done. So we can go back to our site and we can open up our debugger and clear the requests. And now when we load any page, we're going to get EVAR4 and this will either say new or repeat. And so it says repeat for me because indeed I've been to this site on another visit on other days, even earlier today. So I am a repeat visitor. Now this will get reset if I'm a new person. And so if I were to go nuke my cookies off of the site and then run this again, then it would say new. But the great thing about this, and you can see it in the documentation, is that the kinds of things that you can get from this are really cool because you can see what percentage of your visitors are new versus repeat. You can see when does the conversion happen? Is it for repeat visitors or do they do it on their first visit? Do certain marketing channels drive more success on the first visit or on repeat visits, etc. So lots of cool stuff you can get from that. Again, if you go to the documentation here and you look at these different plugins, then you might find some really cool functionality that you want. You can document it, set it up, and then you'll have these cool things happening. Good luck.